Hi, guys. So welcome back to my podcast. Welcome back to Sean's Magical Odyssey. Uh, today, guys, I'm very, very excited. I have my friend Cody on. Cody is one of the co-creators of the Speedo Movement. You can find them on Instagram, at the Speedo Movement. Um, and today, we're going to find out a little bit more about it. We're going to find out a little bit more about Cody, and we're just going to have a general chat and uh, share all of this with you guys. So thank you for listening. So, uh, Cody, welcome to Sean's Magical Odyssey, the podcast. Before we get started into stuff, um, I, I like to tell everybody that Cody was one of the very first people that I did uh, on my YouTube channel. I had my video posted on there, and that's when that was at the beginning of the pandemic, and we were figuring out technology. So I'm sitting in my living room. I have Cody piped into my TV set. He can't see. He's just kind of looking off to where I've given him a point of direction and we're filming this uh, YouTube video and I'm wondering, oh my God, what the hell are we doing? This new world. But <laughs> if you didn't know, I'm very excited because that is also my most watched YouTube video with uh, 1.7K views. Nice. Right? People watch it all the time. <laughs> and it's funny because obviously people love Speedos because my next uh, most popular watch video is 1.4K views. And that was when I was talking about uh, Speedos are made for everybody, whether you're gay or straight, right? Yeah. And I got that yeah. idea kind of from um, the Speedo movement, uh, just because you deal with everybody, gay, straight, mm -hmm. whoever, doesn't matter. So Cody, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on again. I'm so excited and I'm so honored. I um, I had so much fun when we did the podcast and, and I love watching the video because I don't know how you put all that together, but it does look fun. And um, yeah, we had a great conversation and thank you for bringing me on here. I, I'm, I love what you do. I love the energy that you put out and the, the content and um, just honored to be part of it. So thank well, you. Thank you. Yes, because I've been getting great feedback. People who are listening to the podcast, especially people I know, um, say that they just love it because it feels like I'm sitting in the room chatting with them. Yeah. And so they're like, we're just listening to your stories and we're listening to you go on and on. And then I'm like, is that a positive thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going on and on. But uh, yeah, so I've been enjoying this and it's great that I can use Skype and then reach out to everybody around the world and bring you guys closer to all of the listeners. So I'm excited about that. So yeah. um, just to give a little background, um, how you and I met and uh, you and I met through, it was Instagram because yep. uh, the pandemic had started. I had lots of free time. So I'm sitting here floating around looking through Instagram and I come across the Speedo movement. So, of course, I'm a huge Speedo fan, Speedo mm -hmm. wearer, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what this is all about. So um, you guys were kind of just getting started kind of in your infancy. Um, so I reached out to you and uh, you and I just uh, struck up a conversation. Um, I had been uh, starting this YouTube channel and I was asking if you'd be interested to be a part of it and you were. And then, yeah, and it just grew from that. And then usually I'm at least checking in with you once or twice a week. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's how f friendships build. So I'm very excited about that. But yeah. so, Cody, I want to let um, the listeners know a little bit more about you and feel free to talk about what you're okay with and what information you don't want to share, but just kind of an intro of who is Cody, what do you do, where are you in the world? Yeah, well, as you said, my name is Cody and I am one of the co-creators of the Speedo Movement, which started on Instagram. Uh, we're, you know, the page is centered and focused around the idea of, of celebrating male body positivity, um, having a conversation around that um, and supporting each other. And we don't care your size. We don't care. We, we don't care your gender either, to be 100 yeah. percent honest. I mean, we, we are really honestly wanting everybody that wants to be a part of that conversation to see our community as a place for that. Um, although, like I said, it is mostly focused around male body positivity. Um, and then of course the appreciation and celebration of wearing Speedo style swimwear. 
Um, and so, so that's what I do a lot of the time. Uh, you know, we, we have grown by leaps and bounds. I wish I could remember, um, the community member count that we had back when we did our YouTube, because it would be really fun to be able to say like, Oh, remember. And, and it's beyond me to remember at this well, point. I looked but... it up though. And at, you were just under 5,000. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. we're at, we're, we're going to be at 16,000, I would say probably, uh, next week or the week after. So we did a big 15,000 community members celebration and, um, you know, I was really proud of the various stories that people sent in and, uh, we had a winner. It was a big prize, our biggest prize pack that we've done. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I do that, uh, Personally, I am an insurance. I've done a lot of insurance work in my life. Um, I've been in corporate offices. I am currently at an agency. Uh, I Basically, I manage the office and I can sell insurance. I'm a licensed agent. Um, I'm married. I live in the Kansas City area with my wife and at this point, two dogs. We've generally had three, but we lost one in December. She was 12 and she had a lot of issues her whole life. And um, I think honestly, you know, she had a thyroid problem. She had epilepsy. She had um, sporadic incontinence, especially when she was sleeping. So she wore diapers all the time. She was right. the love of my life though. I mean, yeah. second to my wife, obviously, but <laughs> you know, that that dog was by far and away one of the sweetest souls that have ever, ever been on this earth. And um, unfortunately, I think her body just got tired of I mean, we, 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 when I say that we paid a car payment each month for maintaining her, you know, life and or a, a decent life for her, I'm not lying. It was it was expensive and she was on a lot of medicines and you know, it was kind of sudden. And but anyway, so we have two dogs now and we used yep. to have three and um, we're kind of, you know, muddling our way through that at this point. Um, I design I, you know, part of the Speedo movement is uh joe and i have released a line and i think we were getting ready to possibly when we did the youtube um yeah. and so we have launched our line and we have done a couple of really fun things with some other uh collaboration partners in terms of we had a an artist that did a suit with us and we did a limited edition of 25 which you got one i which did yes i was, was so excited. excited you just got it recently because you're in <laughs> yeah. canada and you know, I felt bad because we had, um, there were about five at like right around when you ordered that were the last five and there was something with the mail and then there was a shutdown at the manufacturers that we use. Yes. Uh, and so, yes, it took until like almost February, but yeah. what I will say is I'm glad that happened now, as opposed to when we first started, because people are now kind of getting used to the idea that, you know, life doesn't happen at the snap of a finger anymore. So That's I appreciate right. your patience. Um, so, but that was a really fun suit. We worked with Emmett Smith. He was, he's an artist out of the San Francisco area. And I love that print. I think it's so cool. And, uh, thank you for supporting us and getting yes, one. Of course. I love it. Um, but I just wanted to go. So I, I don't know if I really fully understand, um, how did the Speedo movement start? So like, um, did you already start it or had Joe had already started it? And then you kind of jumped on board. Like, how did that how did that happen? Yeah, so I have, um, let's see, it's been, I was kind of looking back on my, one of my accounts on Instagram, and I think I started my own little kind of design and custom clothing-ish company. Um, it was around 2017 is when I was getting going okay. with that. And so, you know, I taught myself, I'm a self-taught designer. I don't have any formal training, but I, I decided that after many, many years of, wanting to design clothing and specifically underwear and swimwear um, that I was going to take the leap and figure it out. And I'm, I'm pretty tenacious like that. Once I decide I'm going to do something, I do it. And so I figured if I'm going to be doing this, I might as well, you know, see if anybody wants anything. And while that little company doesn't really do a ton of volume, it's fun because every once in a while I'll get contacted by somebody for a special project. I've had a client in Germany where I did a shirt for him. Um, you know, I've, I've had, I've got a client that is a youth organization where I've done a lot of work for them and I do everything from, you know, shirts and swimming suits and bow ties to, you know, banners. And if, if it needs to be sewn and it's within my wheelhouse, 
and I have time, you know, I kind of a jack of all sewing trades in that yeah. regard. So I originally met Joe because he contacted me wanting me to make him a custom suit. Oh. And so when he contacted me, that was the initial where we met. He, he had through Instagram, through my company, messaged me from the Speedo movement that he had just put up and started on Instagram and said, you know, I, I really love your work. I see that you do swimwear and I'm really interested in a custom piece. And we spent, um, geez, the better part of a couple hours talking and designing. And, and in fact, one of the, I'm sure that one of the guys that, you know, Jason, he's in Canada. Um, that's how I met him too, was he found me on my uh, Instagram that I do with my company and I was going to make him a suit and okay. talking about designing and you know, all that. And so I was like the speedo movement. I mean, obviously I have brief style, speedo style swimwear through that company. I was, I kind of put it up there being in Kansas is not as well received. So I was <laughs> so excited that somebody found me and, uh, I was like, heck yeah. And we just kind of got talking about how he started the speedo movement, which was basically Joe is, is, um, I would say he calls himself a bear. Um, yeah. So he's a larger guy yep. and really felt like there was a void in the, the ethos, so to speak of, of body conversation that allows for that and also supports that and celebrates that in terms of brief style swimwear. And I thought that was great. And in fact, what I've said many times as people has asked me this question is it's almost like he kind of pulled out what's been in my head for so long. I just could never figure out how to get it out. I, I had so many conversations with my wife saying, I want to do something that makes a difference, that helps people feel better, that puts kindness in the world and also celebrates, you know, this, this, um, I guess, obsession, so to speak, of, of swimwear and underwear that I have and appreciate and brings that together in a way that it's, it's, a uh, it's going to, you know, what's the right, how do I explain it? Like have a kind of humanitarian effort to it. Okay. But, you know, also realizing, I think part of my hang up was like, I didn't want to kinkify it. I didn't want it like, you know, so anyway, that's, I, I never really brought that to fruition. So when Joe contacted me and I saw what he was starting at the, and at that point, it had only been like a week or two that he was up. Um, we hit it off right away and we talked and we went back and forth for a week or two before we formally decided to work together. Um, you know, I talked with my wife a lot about it and, uh, it's, it's kind of been pedal to the metal ever since. And we, we formed our company where, uh, we're officially an LLC and business partners, and we are very good friends. Um, and yeah, all through the power of Instagram in a nutshell. <laughs> it's great. Now, and now I know at one point when we had talked, you had never met Joe. Have you met Joe yet? Uh, not formally in person. No, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I yes. love it. Yeah. <laughs> I had a pl I had plans to go in July of last year of 2020. Yeah. 2020, okay. Which was also the month that I turned 40 and um of course with the pandemic and everything it was just it just didn't make sense, you know. He's got two small kiddos and I have been personally very trepidatious about any sort of going out. I, I am an introvert by nature anyway. Right. So to be honest right. with you, I was actually just talking to my wife before we were chatting about how, you know, while I do like going out to bars and going to clubs and dancing and stuff, for the most part, I don't miss going out because I really like being at home. So yeah. it's been okay for me. Um, but yeah, so I had that trip planned in July of last year didn't happen. I had three trips last year, you know, when the whole world, we all are dealing and dealt with that. Right. But yeah. Um, this summer, I think I'm going to be going down there. Joe is building a pool at his house. And okay. so, you know, hopefully through the more readily available idea of testing and, you know, depending on where we are vaccine wise and right. stuff, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable. And since he'll have a pool and we can, you know, if we need to just be at his house and limit exposure. So yeah, I think we're going to meet this summer. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's awesome. Yeah, I know. Because I always found that really funny that you guys have this kind of uh, business going and, and have a friendship and yet have not met face to face. Right. But I feel like I guess it's the same with you and I, because I right. feel like you have become a good friend of mine of um, and we haven't met. 
face to face. Only we only meet through uh, the social media platforms, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So we're yeah. just hoping we're all actually people, right? Like the computers haven't totally taken over and manifested these avatars of people, and we don't even have a clue. <laughs> but <That's right>. anyway, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I, when you were speaking about being an introvert, so I'm a huge. I would say I'm an extroverted extrovert extrovert. Oh, of course. So I, I picked love up on that being, when we met. <laughs> yeah, I love being out. Um, so I've had to learn a lot um, that it's okay to be at home. It's okay to spend time doing things that I've always wanted to do, but kept putting off because I was so busy being out. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, for me, it's it's been a little bit of an adaptation, but, you know, I've had other things to keep me busy. I've had YouTube. I have this podcast now. I also have the Oculus um, Quest 2. Yes, which we're friends on, and I can't yes, wait to get on I there. Yes, I found <laughs> you on there the other day. We've never talked about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, he is in my list, because yeah. I was looking on there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing on that half the time. I, I am. It's something brand new for me, but it's fun, you know? <laughs> I love it. Of course, for it's perfect for me, because um, I'm going to have my friend Gerald coming on, who I've met through there, who lives in Tucson. He writes okay. for one of the uh, the papers out there and writes entertainment. So we've hit off a great friendship, um, I, you know, and I just, I'm like, I don't even need friends anymore because I can just have them virtually. It's perfect. Yes. Right. It's so, so fun. Like when you bounce into the different places that, you know, the, the thing that I, I'm always, I feel like um, sometimes when I bounce into a room or somebody accepts me or vice versa, and it's like a kid. I, I, I get a little bit oh. weirded out by that. I'm like, okay, I know there's an FBI agent that listens to all of our phones. So yeah. FBI agent, this was solely strictly because I had no idea. Like I'm Gerald and I anything. have figured out the kids. <laughs> Gerald and I know the kids now. So when we get in the rooms chatting, we have a code. First of all, our code word is Oklahoma. Mm. And that means that there's a kid in the room. We're going to come out of the room and then we'll join each other later on. The other reason or the other way you can tell their kids is they're doing those hand things. You know, when okay. you're playing with your controller, so you yeah. can kind of tell it's a kid right away, right? So Gerald would go, oh, it's a kid in the room. Oklahoma, he disappears, and I come out of the room, too. So we march. <laughs> now, there I hasn't been it. as many on there now, and that's, of course, on the, the V-Time uh, chat or whatever. So the kids seem to have kind of dwindled because the adults are boring. Um, yeah. And they have rec room. They can go hang out in rec room. God. Right. Right. right? So, but anyways, yeah, so we can, uh, yeah, we know each other on multiple platforms and that's my latest thing. And I, I love spending time on there. Now, if um, we can just get them to allow us to have our avatars wearing speedos, like, yes, then, then I feel like my, my, um, my virtual self could actually be using, like, I, I have like a hundred plus speedos at this point. Yeah. And because of COVID pandemic and everything, I haven't been able to wear them for real, for real. So <laughs> I like, I want to like have my avatar wearing speedos. I want yeah. it so bad. <laughs> I think it's going to come. I, fe I feel like down the road, one of my friends who's very into this and knows virtual stuff um, is saying that eventually it will probably be kind of an augmented reality. So eventually you'll have cameras installed in your house. So when we actually go on there, we'll be able to see kind of holograms of each other because we'll have oh. cameras. So whatever you're wearing, that's what you will be wearing in the virtual world. So oh well, we'll, we'll see. see if I we'll see if I put those in my house. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. But that's that's where I guess it's going to be moving. So well, you know, we did get. I mean, when Joe and I first started this speedo movement, it was probably. I don't know, maybe it was like a month in or two months in, somewhere around there where the uh, the Speedo icon on the emoticons yeah. all of a sudden, because I'll, I'll never forget the day Joe sent me a text message and he was like, look, there's a Speedo emoticon, you know, and now of course, <laughs> like, I was like, we have to put it in our bio, we have to use it, like, yeah. and of course, because our logo also has like, you know, the little icon of a Speedo, so it was like, Perfect. So yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> it. it should be I everywhere. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's probably because that you guys have the speedo movement that it, this the, these icons are happening. <laughs> I, I <laughs> wish I could think that we had that much pull, but I appreciate the thought. <laughs> Ooh, who knows? We're changing the world, right? One person at a time. That's for um, sure. So who is like, who is the speedo movement for? Um, I know that it's mostly men, like you had talked about earlier, but I, I, I know that I've seen some women. You've posted yeah. some women on there as well, right? Yes. Um, 
and and obviously uh, I believe there's some trans on there as yep. well too that it's open obviously to everybody. So yep. when you were coming up with this concept of the speedo movement, who were you designing it? Who who did you have in mind that you were designing it for? You know, it it really we didn't really have like a set here is the parameters or here okay. are the parameters. Excuse me. Let me be proper. It, now yeah. I will say to the listeners, it's 1045 at night, which for me is, you know, it's early in the evening still, but I did just finish a martini. So <laughs> You're good. listen, this is all about fun. When I'm the, the whole point of my podcast is for people to have fun. When I make a, a slip up or whatever, I don't edit it out because when yep. we're talking with each other, that's how it happens. So I like yeah. to keep it very natural and real. So feel free to correct anything that you said. It's okay. <laughs> well, that's it. That's and that's that was one of the things that Joe and I very early on we did decide was we're not when we post pictures of ourselves in the various suits that we get from the partners that we collaborate with, et cetera, et cetera. We don't edit those pictures. We don't yeah. use filters. We don't now with the the only exception is I might change a picture from color to black and white. Yeah. Because every once in a while I think a black and white, depending on the way the light is and stuff, can look really cool. But I, you know, for the pictures that you see from Joe and me personally, none of them are run through any filters or anything like that. And of course, we prefer the community to do that as well. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I, I guess I shouldn't say unfortunately, but of course everybody has their own idea of what they want to put out there. And so, yeah. yes, there obviously when people submit us pictures, those might have filters on them, but for everything we do, we have always tried to keep it very easy going. Just kind of like you're saying, when people come and talk to us on our live broadcast, when we interview designers and things like that, we're very much like, you know, don't freak out. Don't get too nervous. This is really yeah. just a conversation. We want this to be for, for everybody, every normal type person, you know, and I would say beyond that, the idea goes into, I can tell you a whole lot more about who we don't want to be a part of the Speedo movement okay. than who we do want to be. And that's kind of by design. You know, it's more, it's more, um, we just, the idea of inclusivity is so important to us that we didn't want to narrow that down. But if you're rude or a bigot or, you know, racist, things like that. Yeah. You're not, you're not looking for what we're doing and get away from us. But yeah. if you're a kind hearted person that genuinely wants to support other people and also let's be obvious, look at people in speedos and be okay with that, then yeah, you're part of the speedo movement and you can be a woman, you can be a man, you can be non-binary, you can be gay, you can be straight, you can be bi, you can be any other definition, I mean, I only use the main ones because honestly, I those are the ones that come easily to mind. But I want everybody, you know, I don't, whatever you identify, however, as long as you're a nice, decent person, that's okay, you know. So, yeah, to answer you, we've had, we've had, um, we've had women that have featured because I feel like in the conversation of body positivity, obviously women have, have had a, a hard uphill struggle and and there's still a lot of work to be done um so not including them in in this conversation almost feels i don't know in a way like not not acknowledging the forefathers so to speak i yeah. think as as men we definitely need a lot more and women if we're breaking down genders by the two just you know as a precursor to that but um and women have obviously been fighting and, and working on trying to, you know, have more of that inclusiveness with regard to size and body shapes, et cetera, et cetera, for a lot longer. Um, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't we look at what they've done? I mean, they've changed the industry and, and are continuously changing it. And now we're just bringing the the voice to to men in that regard. But I want it to be with us in a respectful, appreciative way, not in a, you know, um, we're fighting for our space within this. We, I just want and really appreciate that we're all collectively talking about the human body doesn't have to be the ideal of what marketing shows you, you know, like exactly. <laughs> you don't have to worry about if you are a man or, you know, identifying as male as if you don't have eight abs and 
you know, mm -hmm. all of that. By the way, if you do more power to you, that's yep. totally fine. We have nothing. There's nothing against that either. But not everybody has to wants to or needs to live in that limited space of the definition of beauty. So I agree. And like so. So for I work part time with American Eagle and our sister store is Airy. Um, and Aerie is doing very, very well because they're doing exactly that. Their, their ad campaigns yeah. and their promotional are using real women's bodies that have been not touched up, right? And I, and I think that's great because we're moving away from the Victoria's Secrets and those kind of things. And we're moving into, hey, this is what real people look like, right? This yeah. is the way we live. Maybe 50 years ago, everybody was super thin or whatever. And that was a different ideal at that time. But we live in a different climate. We live in a different area era where we don't want people to be stressed because they are a little huskier or they're not the ideal build that we think they are, right? Because that's just the way people are. People are human and that's the way they, they came yeah. out and that's how they came into this world and that's how they feel the most comfortable. Um, and, and when I look here at on the Instagram page of the Speedo Movement, so it's, it's promoting male body positivity and yep. the worldwide acceptance of swim briefs on all bodies from all walks of life, right? Which I think is great. It really covers everything. Um, and again, uh, promoting the acceptance of swim briefs, right? Because I know that's such a big thing. And, and in Canada, maybe, you know, growing up for me, um, I see Speedos. I would see them probably more than American people would, um, only because there's this thing about when, you know, in Europe, everybody wears a Speedo and then you come to North America and everybody's like, no, 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 your shorts need to be down past your knees, <laughs> yep. right? Uh, you have to have that white tan line from your hip bone down to your knee, right? <laughs> and like, I don't know why, but you got to have that. Um, and I feel like, at least for me and, and being in the gay community. So my first real exposure to Speedos was when I started going to Florida and I go to Fort Lauderdale and there's a gay section yep. of the beach there, Sebastian Beach. And everybody wore a Speedo there. So if you weren't wearing a Speedo, then it was like they were looking at you because you weren't wearing a Speedo as sure. to the way it would be normally when I go to a beach here in Windsor. Uh, where I live, if I wear a Speedo, people are like, they're horrified, right? I don't know why, because I'm not naked on the beach. I'm just wearing a Speedo. And and, exactly. and for various reasons, right? I wear it because um, I'm comfortable wearing it. And I also wear it for practicality, because I don't think that people also know that when you wear a Speedo, they dry very quickly when you get out of the water. So yeah. you're not walking around with wet shorts stuck to your legs, and then right. you end up getting kind of a jock itch down there because you're wet and damp and all yep. that, right? So I have converted a few friends over to wearing Speedos, even some straight friends of mine, because it makes sense. We exist. <laughs> we exist. That's right, right? And uh, so, yeah, so I like that tagline that you have in there for everybody to accept their bodies, accept that, you know, wearing a swim brief is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And it's from all walks of life. So it's, it's perfect. And when people scroll through your Instagram page, there is all body types on there. There is super muscular guys. There is uh, bears. There's hairy guys. There's guys that are underweight. There's guys that are overweight. It's like, it's whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But the big thing for them is they're taking that moment to send you that picture. And I know a lot of people are just like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm sending this to them and they're going to post it, but I, yeah. I have to do it. I got to put it out there, right? So, yeah. and, and it's great. And you have a lot of posts. You have 2,700 posts on there. So Is that right? Okay. Yeah, it's like 2,693. <laughs> so I mean, there's a lot I'm, of people out there. It's really, I, every single individual that allows us to post their pictures on our page is somebody that has taken a step to be in, in whatever way, whether that's the only way at the particular current moment, or, you know, if they're going to continue that conversation and be part of that conversation, but they've taken a step into that, that dialogue of, of what we're trying to do. And I remember so many of them. I can't say I remember all of them, but I've noticed when I'm having conversations with people that, you know, follow the page or, you know, friends that I've met through the page and because of the page, um, yep. you know, they'll be like, oh, so-and-so. And, um, you know, there, there's a little piece of, of, of myself in each one of those because I, I take it, it's such an honor to be able to be a platform for people to feel good about themselves. And, 
you know, there's some that I, I absolutely remember some of them being like big steps for these individuals. And it, I, yeah, you, you could at, at surface value, think of it as, oh, well, it's just an Instagram page, like whatever. But that's not, that's not what it is. Like I have psoriasis personally. So even, even I have pictures on the page of myself where at one point I was so um, flared with my psoriasis. I was like, I don't want to put this picture up, man. Like, yeah. you know, but we were working with the company Splish at the time and we had a, a set time frame for our collaboration because that's typically how we run them with the various companies that we bring to the community. And, um, and they were generous enough to send me the suits. And part of the agreement is, you know, we want to promote your, your company. We want to promote the idea of what you're doing and bring it to an audience that understands that you don't have to be a super fit model if you don't want to be, and you can still wear this. But that particular picture of me with, with that psoriasis was one of the hardest things for me to post. And um, there's a few guys on the page that have sent me pictures sent, since they have sent us pictures sent sent us pictures since, excuse me, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, they have talked about their, their struggles with psoriasis. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's cool because, you know, that's, it obviously touches my heart personally, because I, I can very easily understand what they're dealing with, but to put that out there or, or for example, there have been guys, one of the things that I was more surprised about I don't generally get too surprised. I'm a pretty pragmatic person, but one of the yeah. things I was more surprised about in doing this was the really thin guys and how much they loathe their bodies because they a lot of times feel too thin and too, um, I, I, you know, like too small. And they've spent their whole lives looking at guys that are, you know, twice their size and trying to bulk up and they just can't do it. And, right. you know, it's, 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 it's really not that different than the guys that are bigger that have spent their whole lives wanting to be smaller. That's it's right. just, yeah. it's just whether the word is big or small or small or big, you know, I mean, um, you know, we've had guys that have talked about the size of, of their packages and, and some of them that are, you know, self-admittingly have a smaller um, genitalia and, and how that gave them and caused them hangups about wearing swim briefs. And then, yeah, um, you know, which I think in the grand context of being men in general, I think that's just phenomenal. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, whether it's your stomach or your ear, your nose or your penis, or like we all have different sizes of bodies. Yeah, and, we do. You know, so, um, you know, when somebody gets vulnerable and really, really goes into part of that conversation, I mean, I'm hoping that when I'm gone and when Joe's gone and whomever else at whatever point gets to take this over or whatever it morphs into, you know, whether it's uh, cameras in our room and instead of you looking at a screen on your phone, you can actually pull up avatars of the people yeah. and you can look at them right now. However, the it's coming. Holds it. I'll have it. You won't, but I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope that, that those conversations and those voices are still there. It, it's kind of a, it, you know, it, I, I see it as kind of an archive of what's going on and it will continue to be an archive of what's going on in the conversation of, of our bodies and how we perceive them and 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 how we are, interact in the world in in these vessels that hold what is really important, which is our our own essence, our being. You know, you can't be alive without your body. So absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, um, it, it's cool. When, uh, yeah, and I've had a little bit of psoriasis breaking out now, too. So I'm like, ah, so like on my side here, my rib cage, I have two spots. I'm like, it's so weird. Why does it, why do I have two spots, one on yeah. top of the other? <laughs> and then on my YouTube channel, um, I've had a couple of people say, oh, well, like, what's going on? Why do you have a rash? So right in here, yeah, because uh, you can see me right now, but right in the crevice of my um, nose, my where where it meets up here on the top, my my forehead, I have some spots there too. So I use some Dovabat and try to help clear it up. But it's a battle, and eventually, I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and put makeup all over it or whatever because the cameras are too good nowadays. They're going to pick that up. It's me. Hey, <laughs> this is me. Yes, if you're okay. sitting across from me, you're going to see it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight. I don't care. This is this is who Sean is. And if Sean has psoriasis here, um, then, you know, love it or leave it. I don't care anymore. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to stress about it. It's not because then I stress and then you get more psoriasis. Then you get right? more. So, yep. Exactly. That's right. Well, and that's kind of the whole point, right? Like 
if you had, if you, if let's, let's, for example, say the conversation we're having was different and you said, you know, I have the psoriasis on my face. I feel more comfortable wearing makeup to cover it. I'd support yeah. you in that too. But there's a freedom in the, in the ability of being able to personally accept yourself, regardless yeah. of what those external pressures are. That is part of wearing a Speedo and, and being in a, you know, in an, a crowd of people that might not be wearing you might be the only one uh, yeah. you know showing oh, your body there. taking you know it's not just the speedo it's not about showing off what you have per se it can be but yeah. it's not it's more about owning what you have and saying this is me i'm going to accept it regardless of what others think and so many people look at the speedo as like oh he just wants that guy wants to show off his junk he wants to show everybody right. and, I, I have met very, very few individuals that have really, that's their core reason for wanting to wear a Speedo style swimwear. Almost every interaction with every individual that I've had, and and by now, as you said, we've had, what, 2,700 posts? And, yes. you know, I've probably talked to four or five times that amount of guys and and people through our DMs. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've maybe encountered a handful that are clearly, idea of showing off their own junk more than owning their body and being comfortable in their body and trying to bring that to the grander scheme of their lives so and that's okay if they want to show it off too after there's yeah, nothing I wrong agree. with that i agree yeah. absolutely not right so i i want to get a, per, a perspective here because i know that some of the people that are listening are are straight females okay and um what how does your wife how does abby feel about her husband wearing a speedo what is her perspective i mean obviously she's not on here but i'll have to get it from you because <laughs> i feel like my straight female friends would be like oh my god why is my husband wearing a speedo right um because i did read something recently that women do not like when their husbands wear briefs because it reminds them of tidy whities that their dad used to wear wow well, I, right yeah so <laughs> so I'm wondering what they think about you, like, say, wearing a Speedo. Like, I, I feel like more men need to wear them. And I don't know if it's because their wives maybe have an issue or they're feeling so pressure from society. So I was just curious as to what Abby thinks. You know, I, I, she is actually in the room so she can hear me. So if she pipes up and <laughs> corrects me, <laughs> if I say something incorrect on her behalf, um, she, she will not have a hard time, um, you know, speaking her mind, but right. you know, Abby has always been very supportive of, of my swimwear choices and my underwear choices and has really, honestly, she embraced it from the beginning. Like yeah. when we first started dating and um, her favorite thing is a thong. She loves a, a butt. She loves butts. She loves seeing a guy in a thong and a, and a guy's butt. Like that's, that's like her, that's her, you know, that's her boobs for me. Like I right. love, I yeah. love women's boobs, their breasts. I hate the word boob, but she tells me to say boob, not tit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'll say boob. <laughs> see, I, see if you could hear a laugh. I can hear a giggling. Yeah. Um, you know, she's always been very supportive of it. And, um, you know, I don't, I think I got lucky in that regard, but also that was part of, you know, very early on when we met, even though I was only 18, 19 years old at the time, yeah, I was still starting and I, and I had, I had taken the point that I was like, well, I'm in college now and I don't really care if somebody's not going to like it. That's on them, not on me. And, I, you know, I, this individual, i.e. Abby, is going to be somebody that's important to me and and I'm not going to hide it. And it worked out great. I think in conversations I've had with a lot of the guys on the page that that are straight, I would say if I had to guesstimate, which part of this is very non-scientific, but you know, I would say probably about 10% ish to 15% of our community is actually made up of heterosexual cis men. Um, and the ones that I've talked to have said that, you know, there's been various, whether their wives have totally embraced it or have put up with it or okay. have been against it. I've had all three, you know, and, and then of course, in between, you know, for the sake of conversation, we're kind of using extremes, but yeah. you know, people fall on all different ranges of that. I, I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's never been an issue with my wife. And, um, 
I, I, I appreciate that, you know, I, I, mean, I think it's, yeah. And I think, it, cause I think it's important because I really feel that when someone's your partner in life, you should never have to put something away or hide something or keep it a secret, something that you enjoy doing. So if you enjoy wearing a thong or you enjoy wearing a speedo, then your partner, if they really truly love you, will support you for that. Right. Because there's nothing wrong or nothing to be shamed about. So I know, love that. Yeah. She's good with that stuff with you. I just think it's great. I mean, I, I talk to you lots about stuff and I know she's yeah. very supportive <laughs> and she's an awesome human being and all that. A, you know, that. you had said, you had said that I, I, I am a, before when we were, before we were recording this, you and I chatted a little bit and you'd paid me a very, very kind compliment mm -hmm. and said that I am a, a great, super kind person. And, you know, yeah. I think, I think more than anything, I can accredit that to my wife. She's taught me over the years how to be that's that's her essence and yeah. it's just rubbed off enough on me where i i have I, I have nothing else or nobody else to really honestly give that credit to but her um but back to that back to the idea of that conversation i mean there are women that will initially bristle at the idea of speedos just yeah. because i think society it's more as well, not society, but in American and maybe even North American, um, certain areas in Europe uh, and, you know, certain areas in the Eastern Europe. Yes, of course. Yeah. They they make fun of it more. Um, it's a joke. You know, it's not seen as, quote, manly. And I think that is ingrained even if people don't realize it. So. What I mean by that is the idea of just taking a second or two to have a real honest, open conversation, I have found makes a profound difference just in those couple of minutes on somebody's initial response to the idea of, for example, if it's a woman, a man wearing a Speedo, and then her stepping back out of that, realizing, oh, it's probably not that big of a deal, you know? A you yeah. Know, actually... You know, now that you bring that up, I kind of was just doing that because I was told to kind of like um, the kid that doesn't want to eat guacamole, which was me when I was a kid. Something about <laughs> guacamole. Just I hated it. I thought I was never supposed to like it. And, you know, now in my at 40, I can't get enough guacamole. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, the, I'm the same. Only a friend introduced me to a few years ago. I never ate it before because it was green. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's going to taste <laughs> awful. It's going to taste awful. And a friend took me to uh, Whole Foods one time. He's like, oh, you got to try their guacamole. It's really good. I'm like, I can't. He's like, you got to try it. Yeah. So I tried it. Now I'm hooked. Now yeah. I love it. It's, right? it's like I, I, I ate broccoli. I ate peas. Yeah. I ate Brussels sprouts. All green things. But I agree with you. I was like, I don't know about this guacamole. Yeah. This shit. I'm not, not going to eat it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> know, but, you know, funny. so when you challenge that, and I've had some interactions just in real life, too, with women at pools and stuff where I've challenged them and and in a polite, respectful way, yes. when, you know, and um, open that conversation where they're like, yeah, actually, now that you bring that up in your points, like it's sexy when a guy will actually be confident enough to do what he wants to do. And, you know, if I get to look at him, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, I kind of like that, I, you know, I, yeah. and, and that goes to say there's a larger context and we're never going to be able to touch on all of the points in a, you know, in any kind of one off situation like this, we're just contributing to that ongoing dialogue, but um, it, it, you know, it accounts and, and, and really honestly speaks a lot to how much of that is so systematically and systemically ingrained in us I without know. our, without us even knowing it, you yeah, know, I know. And we need to change that. Right. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. One so person at a time. Trying. Yeah. You My know? friend um, Fallon, I told you this story, I believe on the YouTube channel, but her dad growing up, her dad always wore a speedo. So she was just used to it. Right. So it was normal for her. Yeah. And her dad loves the fact that I wear Speedos and he often uh, will make comments about um, me wearing Speedos and how he loves them. So he has this Speedo that he's had since like 1981. Right. And I've already claimed that when he passes, I want this Speedo. Yes. And I'm going to frame <laughs> it and put it up on the wall, right? I so, love that. <laughs> I love that, that he's very open about all that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. Um, what about, okay, so now you also have ambassadors, right, for the Speedo movement because it's become yeah. so big. 
So um, what does an ambassador uh, do for the Speedo movement? Well, you know, the idea of the ambassadors isn't necessarily because of the size of our community. It was in an effort for us to be able to bring a larger and more diverse body type style okay. and, um, you know, different voices to the conversation. Joe and I, that's that's always going to be the main thing. I mean, yes, we are a business and yes, we do have a line and we do want that to be successful. But, you know, we are focused on the message, the conversation and the point of what we're doing before all of that. And when we kind of realize like, oh, we've been doing this for a while now. And, you know, yes, Joe and I represent average regular people. Um, it, it's just two of us. And why not bring more voices into that? And so that's where the idea of the ambassador was born. And we did a, um, we did kind of a, a star search, quote unquote. Yes. I, you know, we asked people to apply and do a little write up, and we did interviews. And we thought we were going to bring on one, and somehow we ended up bringing on four. And uh, <laughs> it's it's fun because. They all have a different point of view, a different perspective. And, you know, some of the choices were, you know, like logistically, we we weren't quite at a place yet to be able to maybe ship stuff to some obscure country right. where we'd love to. But, you know, we're part of that. It goes back to the money factor, right? Like when we were bringing on ambassadors, we didn't and we're not really making money, let's be honest, but um, we definitely had like, it was, it's all funded by Joe and me. And then we have the speed of swap where those donations help, yeah. et, cetera, et cetera. But like coming out of pocket to send somebody something 60 or $70 is, is quite a lot. So there was some of that, that kind of went into quote, um, you know, determining who or how, or what we would be able to bring on. But um, it really was an idea of trying to bring more individuals into the conversation on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, and we're very and, excited. We, and I then, of course, them. you know, again, I think that you and I were meant to meet somewhere. We have so much in common because, of course, one of your Speedo ambassadors is uh, Mike. And I know him as Mikey. And yep. uh, Mike's in Ottawa. And, you know, I've known Mike for when he first moved to Windsor and he was going to university. I've known him forever. He lived in my house for a month because oh, really? they didn't. Yeah, he was, didn't have his apartment ready and it was kind of a transitioning thing going on. So he lived here for a month with me. So I just think that it's such a small world. I love it. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, it's Mikey. Mikey's one of the ambassadors. But yeah, I've, I've known him for a long time. So it's so weird how things go that way. Um what is um, now just uh, throwing a bunch of questions here. What's yeah. your favorite thing about the Speedo movement? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a good question. And, and I will preference my answer by the thing that I always tell anybody that's getting to know me, my mood and and how I feel at a particular time affects my overall being right. um, way more than a lot of people. For example, I love spaghetti but if i'm not in the mood for spaghetti and you tell me oh let's have spaghetti i i will almost have like an abhorrent visceral reaction to spaghetti okay. even yeah. though i love spaghetti so my answer now can change if you ask that question and so on and so forth that's what my friend christian always says he's like i hate when you ask me what my favorite thing is because <laughs> what my favorite thing is today is not my favorite thing four days from now right but yeah. it's just again we're talking about things ingrained in society yep. so um, yep. it's like you know what is your favorite thing about this but yeah. so what do you what well, i guess what do you love or what are you getting uh the most joy out of from the speedo it's, movement it's the conversations with people that happens in the dms and on the back end it's the i i know way more than than what is showing the speedo movement instagram page website facebook page uh, Twitter account, YouTube, and hopefully TikTok soon. We still haven't quite figured that out, but I can't figure out TikTok either. Those are yeah. the those are the those are the iceberg that you see. Yeah. What you don't see is everything that happens, you know, under the surface. The conversations I have with people. I mean, there are times when I'm up, you know, because I am a late night owl, and I'm talking to two or three people, and and I get. 
people share stories with me about their lives. People share stories about, you know, some of the, the best moments they've ever had, some of the happiest times that are going on in their lives, some of the hardest and most, tr like, horrible conversations, situations, and things they've been through, that people share with me some of their deepest, darkest secrets. And I would never, um, I, I would never, so to, I, I would never like disclose that stuff. Of though. course. Like, it's of course. it's in confidence yeah. because, yeah. Um, you know, I will only post what people are comfortable with posting, but having those conversations and being a part of that and, and, and having people trust me with that is really honestly my favorite thing about it. And then second to that, I would say right now is when a guy says, you know, it's because of you that I wear a Speedo. And I never, ever for the life of me thought that I could ever wear one and think that I felt great and didn't care and didn't worry about myself mm -hmm. or that I didn't have a, a six pack abs or that my legs weren't toned or that I was carrying an extra 20 pounds because of whatever reason, you know, or whatever. And you know what I did and I went out and I felt so great. And I just smiled the whole time I was out, like on the lake or on my deck or on the beach or whatever the case is. And it's all because of, quote, because of you. My answer to that to everybody is it's not because of us. It's because of you. We just happen to give you a different lens to see yourself through. Yes. But you're the one that did the work. You're the one that actually did it. So I kind of turn it back around because I really genuinely feel that like it's, it's an empowerment, you know? And when anybody is wearing a speedo now, they know that there's also uh, almost 16,000 people behind them supporting it. Yes. So we're not alone anymore. Right. So yes. if you're the only person at the beach wearing it, who cares? Cause there's 16,000 other people who are yep. in support of you wearing it. If you're at the beach and you're the only one, you can always pull up one of those one of those various <laughs> channels and you can have a group of people right there. And chances are, if you DM, I could be there talking to you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Talk you through it. Exactly. Um, do you have, and I know, and, and throwing this out here, uh, do you have any, like a funny story, something off the top of your head? Um, something that, I don't know, is there funny things that happen um, when you're posting things or just the way things came to be or anything is there a funny story there anywhere i'm sure i'm sure give me a second because yeah. you know, right it, being a podcast i don't want to like sit here and have dead air and people are like oh geez just come up with something um a funny story or something my gosh um well actually yeah i i had it, and you can actually see it one thing that just kind of popped into my mind because you were talking about mikey and his husband, Terry, they're both yes. ambassadors. And we were working with Aussie Togs, which is an excellent company out of Australia. They yes. are so cool because um, one of the things I really love about Aussie Togs and, and the designer that owns that company is they're really interested in, in, in making sure that men have access to sexy swimwear just like women. And their range and styles, uh, it's, it's okay. huge. I, they have okay. everything from, you know, like a traditional, just, you know, three, four inch, just kind of brief, and all the way down to like a micro G-string for a guy, you know, and, and they do have women's wear too. Um, they actually started with women's wear and realized that the men's wear market needed to have an infusion of sexiness. So anyway, long story short, they were very, 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 very generous and sent us multiple, multiple suits, some for all the guys and then to give away as, you know, right. we oftentimes do a uh, little giveaway contests and things like that. And we sent Terry and Michael um, some thongs, some Aussie Talk thongs. And I had no idea that Terry had never worn a thong before. Oh, and, yeah. and I... I love his go get him. Like he was just like, well, we're going to do this. And they did a live where they were in their living room and I bounced in and was watching it too. And they were just hilarious and watching Terry like open a thong. He's like, I could see on his oh, face. Yes. Like he I was watched like, that. Yeah. He was like, I think it was orange. If I remember correctly, yeah. I could be wrong on the color, but he, his face when he saw the thong at first was kind of like, Oh my God, what am I? Uh, like and then he's like all right and, you know he just kind of like just kind of like sucked it up he's like I, i'm gonna do it you know and it was so funny because that's part of why we picked michael and terry is they just have this joyful 
humorous approach to life in general. And so they were playing off of each other. And, you know, on that live show, he actually, you know, put them on off camera and then stepped on camera. And, and, you know, it was just, it it was cool to see, but it was also really funny. I just, I was rolling with them as they were laughing and, and that's kind of um, indicative of my overall idea about what life should be. You know, if something is too serious or it can be difficult, like, I'm the guy that'll laugh at a funeral. It's probably by most standards inconsiderate, you know, in- inappropriate and inconsiderate, but I like to laugh. So yeah, was it, that was so funny though, to be able to kind of pop his thong cherry as we have now yeah. said many times. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I, yeah, I remember watching that one too. So when you bring that to mind, yeah, I remember that. Um, so um, have you, I mean, has, has there been trolls? I'm sure there's trolls, right. That have come on and, and given negative feedback and those kind of things. Um, how do you handle something like that? So when someone comes on and gives you something negative about it, you know, we have, and and it still holds true. We have very few. And, and that was one of my biggest concerns with, with the speedo movement and what we're doing is I was really, really worried that, you know, we would be inundated with, um, bigotry and negativity. And I am very, very proud and excited that it still holds true that that's not the case. Um, we have had a few here and there. I've deleted some comments. What I will say is, you know, more than anything, a lot of times it seems like it's the bot trolls that are just going out right. and something like, come join our MLM or whatever, you know, like <laughs> obviously this doesn't apply. Um, you know, but you know, uh, more of that gets filtered out because we, we do talk with so many people. And I think the message I'm really, really proud and excited is uh, I think the message precedes it. And so it's not as common, Uh, you know, there's been a few people, we had one individual that, you know, was really upset because he thought that we weren't posting enough quote, normal guys. And I, I I don't know how else to explain this. If if you are an individual that sends us pictures in a swim brief that aren't overtly, ridiculously sexual, yeah. and, and um, you know, you're willing to give us a little blurb about your thoughts on potty positivity or a little quote or, you know, a, something about your experience, we're going to post you. The only yeah. time we don't post is one, if we forget, get confused or I think Joe's going to do it. He thinks I'm going to do it. Or frankly, uh, you know, I have a full-time job. I have right. my other company I mentioned, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. My phone, I set it down and forgot when I came back that I was in the middle of something. That's the only time that we're not going to post you, but it does sometimes seem like it comes in waves. So we might have like a day or two where we might have submissions from a lot of really muscular, really good, standardly attractive guys right and and you know we'll post them because it's not about the type of body you have the message is anybody you know but this individual was like well that's ridiculous they can go and they can be on any other one of the hundreds of other speedo pages that are out there why are you featuring them this is for us the regular people and it's like going back to the conversation we were having before we even recorded like first of all None of us owns Instagram. Like, yeah. So first of all, we're all on a platform that's not technically ours. Second that's of right. all, within the platform of Instagram, I am the manager and the quote owner of this particular concept, I guess, more than yeah. anything, you know, and, and for the most part, I choose and Joe chooses what goes on there. And third, this so this is for whomever I say it's for, basically, not for who you think it's for. Right. Because <laughs> they just, can start their own page. He was they really can start flippant. their own page. He was really flippant. He uh and he was like, I'm unfollowing you. And I was like, Okay, bye. <laughs> I was like, you know, I mean, if you're asking me to take down pictures because they don't fit to your idea, my response to that is open your mind a little bit more. Yeah. That's it's the perfect. point of this. The point of this is not to to be closed minded. The, the point is to allow everybody to have a space and, uh, yeah. and, and even muscular guys have insecurities. Uh, 100%. No, we don't think they do, but they do. Well, you know, right. I mean, that takes a lot of work too. And, and, you know, if you want to show that off, I think 
good for you. Yeah. You know, like there, there's nobody on a surface one glance or, you know, a couple of lines is going to ever be able to, to accurately give an understanding of who they are in general. That's, we are so much deeper as human beings than that. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I, there's, again, going back to the conversations I've had on, you know, under the surface, so to speak on the, you know, some of the things I've heard and it's, it's changed my idea a lot too, because yes, when I first started doing the speedo movement, um, I, I was like, well, yeah, why are they submitting pictures? Like, these are guys that you would think would be on, you know, um, men's health or whatever, you know, like what, you know, but, but yes, the, the idea of hating or disliking or being hyperly critical about yourself is universal regardless of your body type. And those of us that might not be quote the standard have a really hard time understanding that when people that are the standard have that quote standard right um but really what we need to do is as much as we're asking them to open and challenge their ideas which most of them actually are most of the very 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 fit guys are not the um the fat haters and shamers that you would think they are yeah it's it's almost the reverse in the experience i've had thus far people that aren't that tend to outcast them more than they the other way around so it's about all of us opening our minds and and being part of the conversation and breaking down those those silly ideas that we have in our mind about what other people are and using our our ability to listen and to find out and get to know what's what's going on for real as opposed to what we think is going on i agree i agree um so tell me a little bit so now you have merch right we you do work on there. Yep. So tell me a little bit. What do you guys, you, I know you have, uh, what towels, uh, yep. t-shirts, tank tops, um, not tanks yet. I know I've asked about the tanks. Yeah. The boys <laughs> want the tanks. <laughs> um, and we, of course we have suits, we have speedos and I, yes. you know, it's, it's a fruition of, of, I, I mean, I was a kid. I, I was early teens well, mid-teens, when the internet first started, and one of the first things I pulled off the internet was sewing patterns, how to make how to make speedo style swimwear. Yeah, I didn't know how to sew at the time. My mom did. My mom, my mom has sewn my whole life. She's always been crafty, and she yeah. doesn't really do fashion as much as she did. Um, just a lot of craft stuff, pillows, home decor, things like that. But she never really taught me, and I didn't ever really honestly. Uh, I mean, I guess if I'm really looking back on it, there is probably a part of me that said, well, I don't want to learn how to sew because that's, quote, girly. But right. I wouldn't say in the in, in my story, that was the main reason why I didn't learn to sew until later. It's just one of many. Um, and, and it's there, but not not as not as a main factor. But anyway, I did want to sew and, and learn how to do that. And I found those. Uh, those patterns, I still have them, actually. I mean, I probably they were probably printed off on a dot matrix printer, for God's sakes, you know? Um, so I've always yeah. wanted to be a designer. I've always had an eye, and my 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 artistic expression, I, I have waited for a long time until all of this came about to, to find the outlet. Like, my mother also paints really well. She okay. can... She can um, she can do very realistic drawing and painting um, just as easily as she can do more whimsical and uh, surreal and cartoon like. And um, she's just very artistic. And and I've always had a creative mind, but I've never found the, the outlet for my artistic ability. And until, like I said, I started teaching myself how to sew and do clothes and stuff. So you know, it's it's more than just merch. We actually designed it, I think, is what I'm trying to get at when I'm, yeah. when I'm giving this background. It's it's not us throwing up our logo on something and saying, buy this, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, right. Either, right? But our 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 designs, Joe and I went and talked about them and sketched and, you know, went back and forth and picked colors and picked cuts and picked styles and picked manufacturers that are here in the U.S. because that was really important to us. Absolutely. Um, 
you know, especially because when we launched, it was it was uh, it was in the fall of last year, which I mean, it, one could argue COVID is even worse now than it was then. But, you know, when we kind of look back at this, we think the time that we were in lockdown the first time as the worst part of it. And really, that was the best part of it, to be honest. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so that, that but that being said, I mean, that was a huge factor for us because we were wanting to support because we're based here in the U.S., you know. Um, small businesses that, you know, would, would bring and be not part of that giant engine of, you know, the garment industry, et cetera, et cetera. So I totally yeah, agree, yeah. We have, and we took a lot of inspiration. There's on, on our website, the speedo movement.com. You can go up to movement merch and then go to, um, movement merch and there's, I, we're going to revamp it. It's, it's a little bit convoluted to get there. I understand that, but um, each piece talks a little bit about our design process and where we got our inspiration and how it came about. Um, anything from my traveling to Seattle, which is where um, the idea for the deco suit was born. There's there's Smith Tower in Seattle, which is a it's a phenomenal art deco building. And to this day, one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture I have ever had the privilege of being in and touring. Um, but I've always been a fan of deco. So I, yes. you know, that was part of where that came from. Um, the fish, for example, um, the one that we call the the crew is is I've always loved fish. I have had an aquarium most of my life. I have in some way or another in almost every iteration of my bedroom from when I was a kid to my house now had some sort of fish decor and they can't see because this is a radio, but you can right. see me. And on my wall behind me, there's even underwater um photography of there you is. know yeah. tropical fish and octopuses are my favorite thing so i knew i wanted to do something with fish um and the comic book kind of came from joe um the we call it the movement it's got this kind of fun whimsical kind of superhero comic book uh style to it uh joe and roberto some of their pictures from their wedding they did that really cool thing where the the guys had um the superhero t-shirts on under yeah. their suits you know so then they pull their their jackets back and i've seen some of their pictures and they're just so fun and that That's just cool. speaks to you know joe and even his husband um his husband was a big part of it too because his husband is a very talented artist so our little kraken the the um the octopus that we use on our kraken brief and on the uh, the the Thassophile brief, he actually drew and digitized for us. So it's a original to us and just for us. Um, and then, of course, we have Metallics. And I'm a yes. huge Metallic fan. Like, if mm -hmm. anybody that gets anything out of the Speedo movement, it's hopefully body positivity. It's hopefully, like, the courage to wear whatever the fuck they want. And that Cody loves Metallics. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know you like Metallics. So Metall I had to have Metallics. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh -huh. it, it's a way for us. It's a, it's, it's a part of our, our, like part of me and my whole creative personality coming out part of Joe and I's like conglomeration of everything that we've done to this point. And, and then, you know, as you know, we worked with Emmett for the limited yeah. edition suit. That was super cool. We've got a couple of things that are in the works behind the scenes right now that I can't give a lot of, of um, course. Yeah. you know, details on just simply because it's not quite done yet. So yeah. it would, it's too early, but um, bringing in designers and bringing in individuals to work with us, also giving that I kind of see part of our line, as I like to call it, more than just merch, um, that that kind of that coffee shop art vibe idea. Like, you know, you can go into a coffee shop and, and you can see a piece by a local artist and it it's on the wall and you can buy it from the wall. Right. I kind of see we're kind of crowdsourcing that that art for the swimwear in a way that cool. I think is unique and, and I'm super excited about. So yeah, I that's, am a, that's a long, I could talk, I could honestly have like five podcasts can. about our line because I'm just so excited about where it is and, and, and it's just started and we just launched that in October. And um, yeah, but like I said, it's, it's more the message first. I will never yeah. be the guy that wants to like shove and sell and all that. That's, that's not the point. I mean, I have a full-time job. Would I love to be able to do this full-time just because I enjoy it and it's a passion? Absolutely. But um, if I if, if I had to choose, do you make money and, you know, your line gets gangbusters and all that, or you can continue the conversation and add to the, um, the dialogue of, of body positivity, of having the conversation around 
why it's unacceptable for some areas or why women can do X, but men can't or vice versa, blah, blah, blah. I would absolutely pick the latter than the former, but I have a huge passion around our line. It's it's really exciting. Well, we can (laughs) always have you back too. I mean, when all the Speedo lines start running, we'll talk about Speedo. I could talk about Speedos all the time and I love talking to you about it. So, and, and yeah. And, and so for my thing, I have my own t-shirts like the stubborn unicorn. Um, I had someone draw the picture for me. One of my other friends tweaked it and my, friend jeremy and his uh boyfriend own the company that make the t-shirts out of grand rapids michigan and then they have distributors in canada so i mean i'm all about local yeah. and stuff and it's great and of course when i when i first had the design come together one of my friends is like oh i guess i know what everybody's getting for christmas this year. <laughs> like absolutely so once uh so once the covid clears up because we lost our canadian supplier um because they had to close the plant here right until things reopen yeah. Yeah. um so i just kind of held off on promoting it because i want people if they order in canada i don't want them to have to go through stuff is coming from the u.s it's sitting in customs for three weeks it's a nightmare right it so yeah. i want to wait till the company is up and run but i mean i love it too and it really represents your brand and it's something that you're passionate about right so i feel like for it's sure. important for sure and um, i love and you know what i need to actually order i this is a classic example of when I say like one of the reasons that we won't post is because something happens and my mind gets sidetracked. Like I specifically remember now that we're talking, you and I chatting over text and I was going to go and I was going to order a shirt. And I don't, I think I was even at work, something happened. And now just now that jogged my memory that I hadn't ordered one yet. Like that's the way it, and that was probably like a month or two ago. So now I'll, you I'll have reminded me. <laughs> I'll send you the link because it's uh, it. They come very quick in the U.S. because they're manufacturing them there right now. Uh, it's just because of the whole Canada the customs is ridiculous. I mean, what it's a T-shirt, people. Yeah. They're feeling the package is a T-shirt, but it's been ridiculous. I've so had I'm stuff waiting. opened. I've had stuff that we've sent back and forth opened. You opened. know, like, and even here in the states, like we. It depends when you when like. So we have the the merch, or excuse me, the uh, the swap shop, which we have donations yes. of the you know really good condition, but used suits and um, just a great kind of swap. Just you know, you can donate it in. We sell it. We use it for our operating expenses. Um, but when we send, for example, if I send one of those by first class package, at the same time I send one where somebody may have ordered three or four, I'll send that on a priority mail. I've had so many situations where the first class package has gotten there in two days, the priority mail that I paid extra for it's taken three weeks. Yeah. It's like, what is going on? Well, you know, the world, the world doesn't know what's going on right now. It's fine. I know (laughs) it's, it's crazy. I know. So, um, so just a couple more questions. Um, um, where do you see the speedo movement in five years? What's the plan? Oh man. In five years, five years. Yeah. I, I do know, I mean, I will kind of put it out there since we've dropped our, you know, our line, Joe and I are are kind of interested in moving into starting and designing a a less um, a less heavily kind of logoed slash tied to the Speedo movement line and doing a more designer type line okay. of, of swimwear. And we kind of have the the beginnings and whispers of a name for that and so on and so forth. And we kind of see that, like, you know, we work with so many awesome companies already that like, if we do end up doing that, it would be presented on the page more like, well, of course you're going to know it's from Joe and me, but it would be no different than, you know, like when we worked with GoGo Amy or when we worked with Cecil and Ezra with Greg, or, you know, when we work with Skull and Bones, it'll just be a, a company that we bring in, but it wouldn't be like pushed down your throats, but we have a lot of um, cool ideas for that. Um, in five years, I hope the Speedo movement has a TikTok that is either come and gone or is at that point of TikTok still around, still going strong. You know, right. I hope whatever, whatever platforms the world moves to, I hope we can navigate through that. Um, because as we all know, like it's really like Facebook, for example, most people have a negative iteration with Facebook now. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of silly to think that things won't change. And, you know, this platform might be one that goes a little bit wayside, but another one will pick up. That's right. Exactly. I hope the conversation keeps going. And I, and I can't wait for, um, 
the idea or the day that a couple of people might be able to be on a beach and be able to start a conversation because of the speedo movement and to kind of hear more about how that happens. So um, I kind of say like, you know, when, when you're on the beach or you're at a pool and you see someone else wearing a speedo, it's kind of like, do I go say something? Like, it's kind of like, I see you, do you see me? Like, yeah. you know, do I, do I come say something? I mean, I'm a straight man. So I'm like, I don't also want to give off like a wrong vibe. I'm not trying to lead anybody yeah. on. Right. It's you know? the, way so, you pre- the way you present it. Hey, right. I like your but, speedo. But this conversation, if this, if this, um, this community gets larger, I, I'm hoping it, it, it allows that to be more comfortably done without so much initial uh, angst between right. individuals. Like you can walk up to someone and be like, Hey, I love your swimwear, by the way, have you heard about the speedo movement? And then they're like, Oh yeah, I saw you on there. Like, exactly. I think that would be, I think that would be so cool. I think so. it's coming. <laughs> I think it's coming. So um, before we go, um, I just wanted to say thank you. Cause I always love chatting with you. I love chatting with you on these platforms. I love being able to reach out and text to you. Um, for those that don't know Cody, I always say that Cody is a, a an amazing human being. Um, he's got a very kind soul. Um, and I love that he's also an ally of the LGBTQ community. Cause I think that's really, really important. So I want to say thank you for that, Cody. It's important that we have you on board. You're giving um, me bumps and I appreciate it. Thank you. That's yes. And thank you. Well, thank you. Great, you've made my night. I just, thank you. <laughs> it's true. I'm, I'm drawn to people who are very positive, who, who bring a positive message. And I've always been drawn to you because of that. So it's very important. So thank you for being part of my life. You humble me. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, Cody, t- uh, tell us. I know you. You probably have this written down somewhere, but like, where can people find you now that they've heard about you? Now they want to find where the Speedo Movement is. So, where can we find you? What are all the platforms? Yeah. So the main one where you're going to find most of what we talk about is Instagram, and that's the underscore Speedo Move. The underscore Speedo underscore, underscore movement, movement on Instagram. Yeah. Now there is another, there are, you're going to find a couple of accounts. One is the Speedo Movement Guys, and that is a, an account that Joe and I use just for if he and I want to be live at the same time on our page, because you can only do, we don't live in the same city, so we can't be in the same room together. So don't do that one, but the one that has the larger community base, et cetera, et cetera, you'll find that. There's a couple of copycat accounts and cheat accounts and things like that try to weep through them. You'll find us. Um, there's a, it's pretty obvious once you find yeah, us. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, you know, we are on Twitter, not as much. Uh, we are on Facebook. A lot of the Facebook kind of has crossed over from our Instagram posts. Uh, we have our website, the speedo movement.com, which is where you can find our store, where you can find the swap shop, where you can find our line. Um, we do have a blog on there. We're not as great at that. I, I think part of that is Joe and I trying to balance and, and figure out. And of course with, with right now the demand seemingly still Instagram and, and hopefully yes. for a while, you know, that's where we tend to focus. But um, I always tell people too, if you're interested in chatting or want to reach out, do it through Instagram because that's where I am 99% of my time. Uh, eventually on Facebook, I do get to the messages, just not as fast. And so a lot of times I notice there's like a day or two delay before I see them. Um, but I'm pretty quick and, and, and uh, happy to chat on Instagram. So yeah, but any of those outlets. And then, like I said, we have a TikTok. So if you want to follow it, eventually we'll be we'll be doing some stuff on there. We're, we're kind of developing and um, I'm kind of playing over in my head. I, I kind of have this idea. I want the first one to be this um, really cool showing of my I get I get asked a lot to show my collection of swimwear. And so I thought, you know, they have those those TikToks where somebody's like outfit changes constantly. I know. I was just going to say that. Like you snap your finger (laughs) and your outfit changes. Yeah. And now that TikTok has allowed a little bit longer, I think, I mean, I wouldn't want anybody to sit there watching it for like three or four minutes or however long it is. But part of why I didn't do it originally is because I, I didn't know if it would get done right in 60 seconds or not. You know, like I was like, I, but I think if, 
I think if I play it right, it might just be a tad over that. And I could, you know, it could just be like a fun, like to some fun music or something. So well, you have to remember TikTok is really for people with short attention spans. Yeah. So they, <laughs> they listen, if, even like if you're 60 seconds, they're like, okay, come on, Cody, let's sum yeah, this up, right? Exactly. Because oh, uh, some of my friends are into TikTok and they send me stuff and I'm, I'm just, I haven't really been into TikTok. It's not my thing. Oh, um, yeah. I love but it. They it's can a- find you on YouTube as well, right? Yeah. So okay. we do it. We do post stuff on YouTube. You can also find it on our IGTV. Um, you know, it it really honestly, it just kind of depends on which one of us is doing it, and then which one. We're not very tech savvy. Joe and I are. Yeah. For for the, um, let's just say, as prolific as this has become we're still pretty much both just a couple of dunces sitting behind our yeah. phones and computers looking at hey. it most of the time saying, how do I do this? <laughs> I have most of my millennial friends. That's why you always have to have millennial friends because they were born with a cell phone and they come over and they're like whipping around on the keyboard yes. and stuff. And I'm like, okay, so I always keep a few millennials in my back pocket. They know Absolutely. what's going on, right? Absolutely. So. And if anybody wants to help us with our website, we are we are wanting to kind of redesign it. Um, but it, it's come as far as Joe and I's capacity, but yeah. we also don't have fun. So I have a hard time. I don't necessarily want to like make anybody work for free, but we can maybe work out like a couple of suits or something. If somebody is willing to donate some time to us to help our website along, we would be muchas gracias grateful. Yes. I don't know why I just spoke in Spanish, but because I... <laughs> you're American. Because you're American. I would be speaking uh, you know, je parle petit en français. I'd be speaking French and you well, speak You know, I I I I actually was I studied French, so it's really weird that Spanish came out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was at one point in my life I was fairly fluent in French. I I wouldn't say 100%, but I could I could carry on conversations um, yeah. you know, understand, listen to music, watch. I dreamt in French. Um, I studied it through college. So um, you'd be a great Canadian. Parents, yeah. yeah, you'd be great Canadian. I, you know, <laughs> like I said, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> another podcast, right? <laughs> right. Another podcast. Exactly. All right. So I want to say thank you very much for your time. Um, I, uh, you know, look forward to seeing all of the things that are going to be happening with the speedo movement. I, uh, follow all the stuff that's happening and I reach out for you just to kind of check in and see what's going on. I want to thank you very much for giving me your time tonight, uh, to do this podcast. Well, thank you for having me on. Thank you for being such a a big supporter. Thank you for being such a good friend. Um, you you know, for people that don't think that you can meet people virtually and establish connections i'm here to tell you uh through my experiences that's absolutely incorrect um i just hope that at some point when we all do get to meet in person that i i am as uh i I am as good of a person as people seem to think i am through the virtual world because my introvertedness might take over (laughs) you'll be fine you can't with me i mean i already have a a pseudo invite to come when the border opens to visit so I will be heading there for sure. <laughs> um, and uh, so, guys, I just want to say thank you for listening. Uh, make sure that if you are not following me on Instagram or Facebook, you can do so at Sean's Magical Odyssey. Also, you can follow YouTube. me on Twitter at Magical Sean. And also check me out on um YouTube, which is my original platform that just celebrated a year anniversary. And you can find me on YouTube at Sean's Magical Odyssey. And I just want to say, guys, wherever you are, stay, stay, say, uh, sorry, guys, wherever you are, stay safe, stay healthy, get vaccinated. And we'll see you next time on Sean's Magical Odyssey. Bye bye.